Hi guys, today we are talking about the best oil painting supplies for beginners. So these are all the things that you need to be able to just jump right in and start your oil painting journey. Uh, but yeah, let's just start with the first thing, which is of course your paints. So you're going to want to have a warm and a cool of all of your primary colors. This allows you to have the widest range of color mixability and the highest level of saturation at your fingertips. You can choose what effect you actually want to have when you're mixing your colors. So say you want a really saturated purple, you'll want to mix your cool red with your blue. But if you want a desaturated purple, you'll mix your warm red with your blue. So being able to have those two different options, that's going to really expand your ability to mix the colors. And I found that that was one of the things that frustrated me most at the beginning was that I didn't understand my pigments well enough to know when I was mixing two colors together that would end up being much muddier. So. Yes, I, I highly recommend that. I do have a list down in the description of the warms and the cools of the primary colors that I like to use frequently. They're really long names, so they're all typed down there. So you can just check that out. And of course you need a white. I prefer titanium white for most of my needs. And I actually use the fast dry formula for this. This means that everything that I mix with this paint, which actually ends up being almost everything that I'm mixing, almost all the colors, It'll dry just a little bit faster, which means that I can start painting on it a lot sooner. And I love that. Uh, but you also want to pay attention to the different features of the paints that you're picking out. There's the light fastness and the transparency or opaqueness that's always listed on the back of the tubes or in the information for the paints. But I think that's about it for the paints. So let's jump into talking about the panels and what I use to actually paint on. So I have in the past used stretch canvas before and I did not like that because I didn't like the uh, the flex that it had as I applied the paint. I didn't like how it would give and kind of vibrate almost like a trampoline. And I also did not like the texture of the canvas itself. So the solution that I have kind of settled on that I really enjoy is actually using a raw board of wood that I then apply gesso on top of. And uh, I use clear gesso, that way I can transfer my sketch, and I can really refine that drawing on the board, and then I can apply the clear gesso on top of it, and it'll seal the drawing so that it doesn't smudge, and then it also seals the wood so that I can paint on top of it and the paint doesn't soak incorrectly into the wood. The clear gesso is a little bit more textured, so I like to sand it down between each coat. If you use a white gesso, it tends to be a smoother, surface right off the bat. So that's just something to keep in mind. So let's talk about brushes. This is the area that I need to invest in the most. Uh, but the the main type of brush that I tend to use the most are synthetic brushes that are on the smaller side, usually round or filbert. And those brushes are great for doing details and just getting really into a focused area. You can use them a little bit for blending too. And uh, yeah, because they're synthetic, they, they hold up pretty well for a lot of wear and tear. Uh, the other brush that I love to use is the uh, bristle brush type of brush. You can find different actual materials that they're made of, whether they're vegan or not. But these brushes hold a lot of paint and they are very durable and robust, which is what I love about them. It allows you to really pile on the paint in areas where you need to get a lot of paint down. And then I can go in with say my synthetic little brushes to clean up areas or clean up edges. And I can also blend them out a little bit smoother, but this lets me just apply paint really quickly and get that coverage down. And then I like to use a type of brush that's called a mop brush. And that is my favorite for blending things out. It creates really soft blends. And yeah, I have a couple of those in a few different sizes so that I can just get get to the, the blends right. <laughs> so let's talk about the tools that you use to oil paint. So the first one is your palette. I actually love this little piece of advice that I learned a while ago, and that is to use an old picture frame that you find from the thrift store as your palette. So this is amazing because you can get a big piece of glass. You leave it in the picture frame so you protect your hands, but, but you can get this big piece of glass to mix on that is <laughs> dirt cheap basically it's a couple of bucks as opposed to say getting a dedicated glass palette from an art supply store that is a lot more expensive and this allows you to get multiple palettes so you can have different ones going as you're working on different pieces i i love having different different ones for different pieces so that i can have all the paint mixed up and ready to go and i can just switch between the two so easily so the tool that goes hand in hand with your glass palette is your glass scraper. This allows you to scrape off dried paint from your palette. I even actually use it to clear off some wet paint when it's still 
there and I don't need it there anymore. Uh, yeah, I just make sure that if I'm using it on wet paint that I wipe the blade off right after so the paint doesn't dry on it and I can keep using that same blade for a lot longer. But, but yes, this is what you use to clean off your palette to prepare it for more paint, which is always exciting. <laughs> but uh, probably, okay, this is by far my favorite tool and that is a palette knife. I love this thing. I love mixing paints with this. I highly, highly recommend this tool. When I first started painting with acrylics way back when I was much younger, I used to mix up the paints with my brushes and uh, that has many issues. The, the biggest one is that it's much harder on your brushes when you're mixing paints with your brushes. It gets the paint up into the, the metal part of your brush, which can splay out your, your brush bristles. <laughs> and it, uh, it affects the shape of the brush and the longevity of it and everything. And, and it's a little bit harder to get a very smooth blended paint mixture. So using your palette knife is perfect for this. It allows you to really just get a very homogenous mixture and it keeps your brushes nice and clean. And I love this thing. I love using it. It's so satisfying. And finally, the easel that I use is just a tabletop easel. This one goes as big as I have wanted to paint so far and it goes really nice and small. It's very easy and portable and I can move it out of the way. So I, I love this one for at least starting off. And until I get into really big paintings, it's got me covered. So the last category that we're going to talk about are the mediums and the solvents. So the solvent, I love using Gamsol. That's from Gamblin. This one is really odorless and it's a lot safer than more traditional solvents for oil paintings like turpentine, which can be kind of poisonous, not great. So I love this one. It's a lot less fumey. And I use my Gamsol for both cleaning my brushes as well as thinning the paints. I have a jar that actually has a little metal spiral in there. And then I submerge that under the Gamsol and that way I can very quickly clean my brushes in between different paint colors. I also have a little jar of clean Gamsol and that's what I use to mix into my paints. And uh, I highly recommend looking up the fat over lean rule. I'm not really gonna go as far into it in this video, but as I work on my piece more and more, I will use the Gamsol less to thin the paint and more of my medium, which I usually use. It's called a Walnut Alkyd medium, and that actually has a faster drying component to it, which I like. It goes well with my titanium white fast drying paint. Uh, but, but yes, this allows me to thin the paint so that I can get the consistency that I want. So I can get those really sharp, clean, crisp details, but it still follows the fat over lean rule. So ultimately you don't actually need a lot to start oil painting. In fact, a lot of the things that I did list, you don't necessarily need either. So this is all just what I love using, what makes it a really enjoyable process for me. And then as you paint more, as you enjoy it more, you might want to invest in more paints and more brushes and expand your collection. But ultimately this is really the key things that you need to just start getting practice in. That's what I love about it is that you can just jump right in and you can start learning different issues that you need to solve so that you can find different mediums or different paints that will solve those issues or different brushes. But, but to just start learning about it, you don't need all that much. <laughs> And I wanna give a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. You guys helped me to create my artwork and these videos. And uh, I will be showing the exclusive postcard for the month of May. So if you'd like to get this postcard, the only way to do that is to go sign up for the postcard tier or the package tier over on my Patreon before the end of the last day of May. I'll have a link down in the description that will take you over there. And um, yeah, I think that's about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments, what are some of your favorite tools to use? Whatever medium you use, I would love to learn more about the different tools that you guys love. Like I said, I think my palette knife is probably my all time favorite art supply tool to use. I absolutely adore that thing. Uh, but yeah, that is about it for today. So I will be back next time with some more art content and I'll see you guys then.